This is a Mercedes G63 6x6, and it is truly the ultimate pickup truck. It is based on the iconic Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. It has six wheels. This one was tuned for more performance, and it's worth a million and a half dollars or more. <laughs> and today, I'm going to review it. I've borrowed this <laughs> six-wheeled G-Wagon pickup from Evan Paul Motor Cars here in Orange County in Southern California. This particular vehicle is in the personal collection of the owner, but Evan Paul has a great inventory of really cool and exciting and thrilling exotic cars. You can check them out by clicking the link in the description below. But back to the G-Wagon. Now, the official name for this is the Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG 6x6. It is powered by a 5.5-liter twin-turbo V8 that makes 540 horsepower and 560 pound-feet of torque. Those sound like good power numbers, but the thing is, the 6x6 is massive. It weighs around 9,000 pounds. That is not an exaggeration. It weighs around 9,000 pounds. And so performance isn't really all that great. Zero to 60 is around eight seconds. As a result, this one has been tuned by Brabus for around 700 horsepower, which improves acceleration quite a bit. Of course, that isn't the only crazy thing about this truck. Another one is the price. These were around $600,000 when they were sold new, and Mercedes-Benz built only around maybe 100 or 150 of them for the entire planet. But Mercedes-Benz never officially imported this vehicle to North America. So if you can find one that's been federalized to conform to U.S. regulations like this one, expect to pay over a million dollars and even more with all the Brabus modifications for more power and performance. Somehow, that seems kind of reasonable for an ultra-limited production, lifted, six-wheeled Mercedes G-Wagon pickup. So today, I'm going to take you on a tour of the 6x6, and I'm going to show you all of the quirks and features of the ultimate pickup truck. Then I'm going to get it out of the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the 6x6, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the most expensive pickup trucks currently listed for sale on Autotrader. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the 6x6 with a discussion of its most obvious and notable quirk, and that would be its size. <laughs> okay, this is a Mercedes-Benz GLK. This is a pretty standard size Mercedes SUV, and they have them all over the world. They're popular here in North America, in Europe, Australia, South Africa, pretty much the whole planet has GLKs. And this <laughs> is how the 6x6 compares to the GLK <laughs> in terms of sizing. Now, again, this is a normal, rational sized regular Mercedes-Benz SUV. The 6x6 is far more massive. The 6x6 is 228 inches long, which means it is over four feet longer than this GLK. More incredibly, the 6x6 is 93 inches tall, which makes it more than two feet taller than the GLK. And this is not some tiny sports car. This is an SUV and the 6x6 is two feet taller. Put another way, if you stacked two of my Ford GTs on top of each other, there would still be six more inches before you got to the roof of the 6x6. At 93 inches in height, the 6x6 is simply too big to fit. Too big to fit where, you ask? Anywhere. <laughs> And indeed, the craziest thing about the 6x6 is absolutely its gargantuan size. But it can be a little hard to convey its size unless you're standing right next to it. It's a little challenging on video. So I'm going to give you a few more numbers. This thing has almost 20 inches of ground clearance. For reference, that's more than three times what you get in a Toyota RAV4. It's almost double what you get in a Jeep Wrangler. And the Jeep Wrangler isn't exactly some low to the ground Porsche 911 style coupe. It's a tremendously capable off-road SUV in its own right. And this thing has double the ground clearance and more than enough room underneath for me 
to climb under. But there becomes a problem when you have that much ground clearance, and that problem is getting inside. You can see when I stand next to this thing, the running board comes up above my knee. And I'm not exactly short, it's six foot four, and that means getting in is really kind of hard. The strategy that I've started to employ is taking a foot and putting myself in this position, standing like this near the running board, grabbing the grab handle, and then just kind of hoping for the best when I get inside the G. Getting out is also quite a bit of a challenge. You kind of stand in here and, well, it's a jump just to get down. But even that doesn't tell the whole story of the gargantuanly massive size of this thing. So here's another illustration. Say you want to get into the engine bay. You pull a little lever in the driver footwell that comes up to here, and then you push a little latch and you open up the hood. Pretty simple, just like in basically every car. And now you can access your engine, except there's a problem. You see, this thing is so insanely high off the ground, so ridiculously tall, that I can no longer reach the hood in order to close it. I can't actually get up there. If I kind of reach at the very top, I can just get the latch part that latches into the car itself. I can kind of pull it down a little bit and then I can get it to here and use both hands to close the hood. But if you were even a couple of inches shorter than me, you wouldn't be able to close the hood. You'd have to stand on a step stool after you open the hood in your six by six. Okay, so those are a couple of items that show just how massive this thing is. Now I'm gonna move on to a few other interesting quirks and features of the six by six, starting with the tire air system. Now, if you don't go off-roading, you might not realize this, but most off-roaders will deflate their tires a little bit when they're off-roading, so that when they go over rocks, they don't puncture the tires, pretty simple. The problem is if you have a six-wheeled vehicle, that can be very annoying to air down six different tires. Mercedes-Benz thought of that, and there is a system in this vehicle that will automatically air down your tires for you. It's mounted right here above the mirror, and you can see there are two dials to the system, one for the front tires and one for the rear tires. And if you want to deflate your tires, you just press the little down arrows, and it will completely deflate them to whatever pressure you want from those dials and then you can more easily go off-roading. But of course, that is only half the battle. Once you have gone off-roading or driven in the sand where you have to deflate your tires, you're thinking, well, now I have to find an air pump and inflate the tires back up. Still very annoying. Ah, but you don't. You see, there are two other sets of arrows up in this control area that can re-inflate your tires. So after you go off-roading, you just press some buttons, your tires completely reinflate. They can go from zero to completely road-ready in 20 seconds. So after you're off-roading, push a couple buttons, and then just drive home while everybody else is stuck there in line waiting for tire air. And also insane is the other dial located in this area above the mirrors here, and that would be a fuel gauge. You're thinking, well, isn't there a fuel gauge in the gauge cluster? And the answer is yes, of course. There are two fuel gauges because there are two fuel tanks. And you can activate the second fuel tank by flipping this little switch over on the right of this control area. When you do that, you release another 13 gallons of fuel, bringing your total gallons to 40, which means you don't have to stop all of that often, although, Let's be honest, you probably still have to stop pretty often because I bet this thing gets like six miles per gallon. And next up, I wanna move on to some more items that the regular G-Wagon doesn't have, which is pretty much everything behind the rear door since, you know, the regular G-Wagon doesn't have a pickup bed or six wheels. And I wanna start with the tailgate. Now the tailgate is a little bit interesting in the fact that it doesn't lock with the doors. Right now the doors are unlocked. I go to lock them and I can still pop the tailgate down. So it's kind of like an old school pickup truck in that sense. A lot of newer ones do have locking tailgates. And since we're back here, let's talk bed. What exactly is in the bed of the six wheel G-Wagon pickup? The first thing you notice is the bamboo. <laughs> now in your truck, you might have sheet metal back here or you might have a bed liner so you can toss stuff in the back. In this thing, there's bamboo <laughs> on the inside of the tailgate, on the floors and on the sides of the bed be sure to take off your shoes before climbing into the back of the six by six. You will also notice that mounted back here is a full size tire and a wheel. The standard G-Wagon has that mounted on the back, but they couldn't do that with the pickup because of the tailgate. So they stick it in the bed, which I'm sure helps dramatically with its curb weight. <laughs> but the result of that is that each six by six actually has seven tires and seven wheels. 
in case you have a little incident and you need to replace one while you're off-roading. Now, one other interesting item you'll notice in the bed of the 6x6 is the sides of the bed. Typically, the floor of a truck bed goes all the way to the sides to maximize what you can put in it, but it doesn't do that in this case. And that's because if you look underneath these little bed side seat things, you will see that there are air canisters there. I believe those are the air canisters to deflate and inflate the rear tires. They had to stick them there, and that meant compromising a little bit on bed space, but obviously it improves your off-road capabilities, so it's a bit of a trade-off. And next up, my camera is nowhere near as high as I need it to be for this shot, but it's as high as it goes, so we'll just have to make do. Next up, I wanna talk about these bars. These bars in the back of this truck make it look really, really cool. I don't know that they really have any rational, functional purpose back here. I suppose you could mount lights on them, but even just sitting here, they give it a much, much cooler look than if it just had sort of a regular, normal pickup truck bed. And one other interesting bed-related item in this truck is that the rear window is fixed in place. In a lot of modern pickup trucks and even older ones, that rear window will slide open for more ventilation or for access to the bed from the cabin, but not in the 6x6. Instead, it just sits there. And next up, moving on to some other cool stuff you can't get in the regular G-Wagon, I give you roof lights. Now the lifted G-Wagon 4x4 squared that was sold here in North America had these roof lights, but Mercedes-Benz had to disconnect them for some stupid government regulation. Well in this thing, they're connected again, and you can see that they're nice and bright and mounted on the roof, I guess to shine into trees that you're about to run over at night <laughs> or something. I don't know exactly what their purpose is, but I do know they give this car a really, really cool look. Now, it's worth noting that in this particular 6x6, the roof lights complement quite a bit more front lighting in this vehicle, some of which was added by Brabus during the upgrade and customization phase. You have the roof lights, five LED lights on each corner, and then below the headlights, you have five more LED lights on each corner, and then below that in the front bumper, you have five more LED lights on each side for a total of 30 different small LED lights in the front of this vehicle. I can imagine that when you see the size and all those LEDs coming at you at night, the 6x6 is a rather imposing and intimidating presence. And next up, one other interesting lighting related detail is the fact that the turn signals are located down here, sort of at the bottom of the front bumper. These are LED running lights until you put on your turn signals and then the LEDs turn off and the signals turn on. Now this is worth mentioning because in a regular G-Wagon and a regular 6x6, the turn signals are mounted up here at the top of the front fender, but Brabus got rid of that and instead they put on this cool looking carbon fiber ridge thing and they move the turn signals down here. Now normally having your turn signals at the very bottom of your front bumper would be a problem. <laughs> But this car is so high off the ground that that's about where they are in your normal, typical family sedan. So it works pretty well. And next up, moving on to some other interesting quirks and features that the 6x6 has that the regular G-Wagon does not. Like, for example, four rear wheels. And by the way, that Hummer behind me, Anyway, moving on, I wanna talk about the wheel arches. Now, when I reviewed the G-Wagon 4x4 squared, I made fun of it for being an off-road vehicle that had these carbon fiber wheel arches. So anytime you took it off-roading, you could damage these wheel arches that were probably like 10 grand a piece. <laughs> Well, this thing has these incredible rear carbon fiber wheel arches that go over both rear wheels. I think if you off-roaded this and damaged one of these massive, unique wheel arches made only for this really rare vehicle, it would be probably like 30 grand a piece. But nonetheless, it still has these carbon fiber covers over these massive tires. But it's what's under these giant carbon fiber wheel arches that really is so cool. I wanna start with the bead lock wheels. Now, if you don't know what bead lock wheels are, it's an off-roader wheel, pretty rare, but basically it locks the wheel to the bead of the tire. And that way, if you deflate your tire pressure all the way for off-roading or driving on the sand, it means that the tire and the wheel won't come detached. They'll stick together always, and you won't have to worry about trying to re attach a tire on the trails. Beadlock wheels are really rare. This thing has them. And that is nowhere near the coolest piece of off-roading hardware in this vehicle. That honor definitely would go to the portal axles. Portal axles are absolutely insane. In a traditional car, the axle meets the wheel right in the center. Of course it does, and that's how the wheel rotates. But that doesn't give you a lot of ground clearance, and that's where portal axles come in. You can see here, the axle actually meets the wheel near the top of the wheel, not in the middle. They have to use this kind of gear system to get it up higher, and that gives this truck more ground clearance 
appearance, better ability to ford water and go over all sorts of obstacles. It's an amazing feature. You almost never see portal axles on real vehicles made by traditional manufacturers because it's so complicated and almost nobody actually needs it. The Hummer H1 had it, but that's because it was commissioned by the military. But this thing has it too, and it greatly enhances its off-road capabilities. And next we move on to a couple of other rather interesting items with the 6x6, starting with this bar back here. Now this thing is lifted so high with its portal axles and all the other off-roading componentry that the regular bumper for the G-Wagon is no longer relevant because if a car hits it, it's gonna go way under that bumper. So to make this thing safe and to make it comply with crash standards across the world, Mercedes-Benz fitted it with this additional bumper <laughs> to give it a little bit more protection and other drivers more protection in an accident. Now, one other interesting item you'll notice back here below the license plate, there is a camera mounted. This thing does have a reversing camera. You stick it in reverse, the camera goes on inside. That's actually a really important thing because rear visibility is a nightmare in this. It's so tall and so long, you can't really see what's behind you without that camera. Then again, it doesn't really matter. You can just run it over. Now, one thing you will not find back here is the exhaust. Where exactly is that? How does the exhaust come out? The answer is in the middle. If you go underneath the 6x6, you will see the exhaust pipe stop somewhere below the rear seats. Mercedes-Benz probably figured, eh, forget it. There's no point in bringing the exhaust all the way to the back. It's costly. It might get hung up on something if you're off-roading. And plus, you wouldn't be able to hear the engine note under full acceleration. So the exhaust only goes halfway down the 6x6. Now, next up, in order to cover some more stuff that the 6x6 has that the regular G-Wagon doesn't, we have to move into the interior. And I want to start with the back seat. Now, when you open the door to climb into the back seat, the first thing you notice is just how beautiful it is back here. Everything looks gorgeous. The leather on the seats is fantastic. There is Alcantara absolutely everywhere. The headliner, the sides of the seats. The seat backs are in full Alcantara. As it turns out, this is not the factory interior. When Brabus tuned this vehicle for more power, they did more than just improve its acceleration. They also substantially upgraded the interior, and you can really tell that in the back. Even the floor is leather with nice hand stitching, and you can see the floor mats are the same. Every surface in this vehicle is really nice, really upscale, thanks to that Brabus upgrade. But anyway, moving on to the rest of the 6x6's upgrades over a standard G-Wagon. One is the fact the back of all the 6x6's have captain's chairs. There's no rear bench here like in a regular G-Wagon. You have two individual seats, and then a center console. And the two seats are wonderfully luxurious. They are heated, of course. They are also cooled, so you can sit back here and enjoy the perfect seat temperature. You also have full seat controls mounted on the center console for the bottom, for the backrest, and even a power-operated headrest for the rear seats, which is pretty impressive. And there's a group of controls hanging off the side of the seat that allows you to adjust like the seat tightness, the lumbar support, the back support, all throughout the rear seat. You don't often find that in the back of pretty much any vehicle. But anyway, moving on to some of the other luxurious items in here, I gotta talk about the center console. And I wanna start between the two seat backs. You can see there's a little door here. You open that up, and there's a refrigerator in this car, which is pretty nice. It's controlled with a little switch below the door. You can put whatever you want in your fridge and make sure that it stays cold while you're driving around. In addition, in between the two seats, you have a little storage compartment. You pop that open and there are glasses in there. You can pour yourself a nice drink as you're being driven around in your six by six. And at the very front, you have an armrest finished in Alcantara, a nice place to lay your arm while you're riding around in your six by six. Now, next up, a couple of other interesting items in the back of the 6x6. One is the rear screens. You can see mounted on the back of the front seats, you have screens for each individual seat if you want to watch a DVD while you're being driven around on your 6x6. And another cool 6x6 rear seat benefit, there are child seat anchors back here. So if you want to use your 6x6 as family transportation to the carpool line, you can do it. But maybe the most interesting 6x6 item, at least from a design and vehicle creation standpoint, 
is the additional back window. You see, Mercedes-Benz wanted the 6x6 to have more rear legroom than the regular G-Wagon. It was massive, so why not? But they used the doors from the regular G-Wagon, and that meant there was this big empty space behind the doors before you got to the bed. Mercedes stuck an extra window in this space, and so each G-Wagon 6x6 has four rear windows, two on each side. The rear windows don't roll down, but they do provide more light back here and give kind of a more airy feel to this cabin. And they allow rear passengers to sit back and their head isn't resting up against some pillar. They can't see anything while they're being driven around. Now, next we move up to the front of the 6x6, which actually is probably the least interesting thing about the entire vehicle because it's pretty much the same as a regular G-Wagon, except, you know, taller. Once you take away this control area for the tires and the additional fuel tank, it's all pretty similar. In fact, one of the things that surprises me about this car is this thing is so special and cool and amazing and expensive, and yet up here it looks really similar to my seven-year-old Mercedes station wagon. We have the same gear lever, we have a lot of the same controls and buttons and switches and dials, and we even have the same key. Now, I discovered this earlier when I tried to start the 6x6 using the key for my Mercedes by accident. It flashes a little warning on the screen that says, key does not belong to vehicle. I guess Mercedes realized that some of their owners have many Mercedes, and so they have to let you know somehow that, no, no, you've selected the key to the wrong Mercedes-Benz. But of course, there are some interesting items worth noting up here, starting again with the leather. The Brabus leather and Alcantara and craftsmanship is just unbelievable up here. Everything is really nice, really luxurious. It just looks like a fantastic place to spend time. And that in itself is kind of an upgrade over a standard G-Wagon. Makes you feel a little better about spending a million five <laughs> for this one. And next up, one of my very favorite Brabus related items with this vehicle is the fact that when you open the door, there is a little decal to the left of the dashboard, a part that's normally covered by the door. And that decal gives you instructions for how to turn on the sport exhaust. They hit it in an existing button, which is the little left controls in the steering wheel. If you hold down the top left control in the steering wheel for two seconds, the sport exhaust will turn on. If you want to go back to normal, just hold down the bottom control for two seconds. You would never know that, except that there's a little decal telling you. And speaking of little decals telling you things, when you open up the door to the 6x6, you'll see a little red decal there in three languages that says, before towing, please see suggested procedures in owner's manual. I can only imagine what these procedures would be in order to tow with a 9,000 pound, one and a half million dollar Mercedes truck with portal axles. <laughs> I would love to see some pictures or video of someone doing that. But anyway, I wanted to know what the procedures were, so I consulted the owner's manual. Unfortunately, it is entirely in German. So I will not be able to know what I need to do to prep my 6x6 for towing. And finally, a couple of other interesting items in this interior. One is the fact that above the sun visors on the ceiling, there are little storage pockets in here. So if you wanna stick stuff up there and kinda of hide it because no one will ever know that that's a storage compartment, you can do that in this vehicle. I'm not exactly sure why there's a storage compartment up there, but there is. And finally, our last interior detail, because the 6x6 is based on the old body style of G-Wagon, you don't have any rational cup holders in here. Instead, you get the basketball hoop. That's right, this one and a half, two million dollar 6x6 ultra limited crazy special G-Wagon, the only front cup holder is this ridiculous basketball hoop looking thing with netting. You stick your drink in there if you want it to be held by your G-Wagon while you're driving along. Absolutely absurd they didn't come up with a better solution considering how insanely expensive this thing is, but the basketball hoop lives on. And finally, we move back under the hood so we can check out the engine. Now, like I mentioned, this thing has been tuned by Brabus, which I'm sure will start an argument in the comments about whether it's Brabus or Brabus or Brabus. But regardless, this thing, when it was new, had 540 horsepower, 560 pound-feet of torque, and that wasn't really enough considering how massive and heavy this thing is. So it's been tuned up to about 700 horsepower, which improves acceleration quite a bit. Otherwise, nothing particularly interesting to see here. The engine is absolutely crammed into the engine bay, as it was in all of these older G-Wagon models before the redesign. But otherwise, pretty standard. You have your Brabus-tuned twin-turbo 
V8. So that's the 6x6 G-Wagon. I've shown you all of its interesting quirks and features, but if you're like most viewers, you probably still have one more question, and that would be, why? Why did they make it, and why would someone buy it? The answer to why they would make it, to me, is really, really obvious. For one thing, something I didn't realize, they already had a six-wheel pickup body that they were selling to the Austrian military. So, someone at Mercedes-Benz was like, let's just jack it up, make it cool, and sell it for $600,000. Why did they think it would sell? Simple, because the G has been insanely popular lately. Buyers just can't get enough. Check this out, the G-Wagon has been on sale continuously for almost 40 years now, and its best sales years ever have been the last few. Even the old model, as it was reaching the end, was only selling more and more. It's what people want right now. So Mercedes-Benz figured, all right, let's make a six-wheel drive one and charge 600 grand for it. People will pay, and they did. This outsold Mercedes-Benz expectations. And I can't believe that other automakers aren't doing stuff similar to this. The Lamborghini Urus is cool and all, but in my opinion, it should have been an off-roader, just like Lamborghini's original SUV. That may sound crazy, but think about all the popular off-roaders right now. The Jeep Wrangler is outselling the Toyota Camry. The Ford Raptor is insanely hot. The new G-Wagon, one of the hottest vehicles on the market. The Ford Bronco, the Land Rover Defender, some of the most hotly anticipated comebacks in the entire car industry. Mercedes-Benz capitalized on that and took advantage by creating the 6x6, the 4x4 squared, and many other variants of the G-Wagon. They're brilliant and other automakers should be following suit. As for who's buying these things, that is a different question. I can't imagine trying to buy one. It doesn't fit into any residential garage, but you gotta admit, if you're into trucks, this is the ultimate truck. And so those are the quirks and features of the G63 6x6. And now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving <laughs> the 6x6. Obviously, the first thing you experience when you're sitting in this vehicle is it is just insanely tall, taller than any lifted truck. I mean, it's just really, really high up. This is the level of semi-trucks, delivery trucks, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it's the same as the 4x4 squared, give or take, uh, but that was ridiculous too. <laughs> it has the usual portal axle issue, which is the ride is a little bit unsettled, and when you come up to stop signs, stop lights, when you stop, it shakes a little bit. If you've never driven a vehicle with portal axles, that's a characteristic of them. Because of the off-road tires, the ride is a little bit rougher than you'd expect. Once you get going, it kind of smooths out a little bit. The really incredible thing, though, is just how high up you're sitting and you're in a Mercedes-Benz. I mean, you don't see that unless you're driving a Unimog, which, you know, you're not. Now, interestingly, you don't really have the feel that you're driving a massive vehicle. Um, it doesn't feel like it's as big as it is. And frankly, compared to American pickup trucks, it's not that big. Um, it's a, if you're used to driving, you know, Super Duty or even larger full-size trucks, you'll find that it's somewhat reasonable. The attention is pretty insane. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. And so, you know, you're driving a lifted truck and a monster truck and a Mercedes, and it's got six wheels, which, you know, is just insane in anything. And, um, a lot of people are looking going, what is that thing? But you do feel absolutely and utterly invincible in this thing. I mean, you feel like you could just roll over practically any vehicle that exists without too much concern. <laughs> it just has no business being this fast. It is unusually fast. It's not like a crazy sports car. I suspect zero to 60 is probably six seconds, maybe a little quicker than that. You know, the stock one does it about seven and a half or eight. Um, but it's way, 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 way faster than it should be given this massive size. I mean, this is the heaviest vehicle that I'll drive in any capacity, uh, short of a commercial vehicle or tank or something ridiculous. And there's just no reason why it should be that fast. And I'm actually embarrassed to admit how much I love this thing. You know, the thing about this six by six is, um, it's just absurd, and you drive it anywhere, and it, you can't. I mean, it's just the, the, the optics of driving this thing around. Everybody is looking at you thinking, boy, okay, that person's really showing off. But it's so cool. <laughs> you just want it. You want to have one. Truly one of the very coolest 
things. I know I'm not supposed to like it as like a rational human being. Like it's a lifted six wheeled, it's horrible for the environment. It's way too monumentally expensive. And you think about all those things and you're like, you shouldn't like this. But <laughs> then you look at it and you sit in it and you floor it and it's like, <laughs> I don't have a choice. I have to like it. It's too cool. It's just too ridiculous. Really though, you don't notice that you're, you're driving anything different than a lifted G-Wagon until you look in the mirror. But I will say, when you look in the mirror, you see that pickup bed, you see the giant wheel arch back there and you're like, well, I'm the coolest guy on the road. And there's gonna be people I know in the comments who are like, this thing isn't cool, it's a monument to wealth and bad taste. Man, I don't care, <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely think differently if they made it in huge numbers, like if it was as common as a Raptor or something, um, then it would start to be like, okay, people are buying this, they don't use it for the purpose, whatever. But it's so limited that it's just, you just have to appreciate the fact that it was done, that it was built. And so that's the Mercedes-Benz G63 AMG 656. I have always wanted to drive one of these and I'm thrilled that I finally got the chance to review this one. And I think it's insane that Mercedes-Benz ever made this. Mercedes is known for conservative luxury sedans and boring luxury family SUVs and diesel European taxis. They barely ever build a car that isn't silver or black or white, let alone a six wheeled pickup but I am so glad they did build it. And I truly think this is one of the coolest Mercedes-Benz models of all time and one of the very coolest vehicles of the modern era. And with that, it is time to give the 6x6 a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the 6x6 isn't beautiful, but it's very cool looking, very purposeful and brawny, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in about 6.5 seconds, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Handling is not great. This thing is massive, and the center of gravity is very high, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Fun factor is huge. It's so exciting and enjoyable, and you can do anything with it anywhere, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Cool factor is also huge. These are so insanely awesome. They turn heads more than basically any supercar, and it gets a 10 out out of 10 for a total weekend score of 31 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The 6x6 is reasonably well equipped, pretty comparable to normal G-Wagon models from this era, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is fine, nothing special, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, the Brabus interior upgrades are a nice step up from the regular G-Wagon from this era, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is difficult because in some ways this is very practical, like the fact that it can crawl over anything and store stuff in its bed and seat four adults comfortably while doing it, but but, of course, it's also hugely impractical because its massive size and height make it impossible to put anywhere. It gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value. And this is hard. These are cool, but it's very hard to say that $1.5 million is justified. They're very pricey, and it's hard to imagine they'll ever go up in value from there. And it gets a 4 out of 10 for a total daily score of 28 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 59 out of 100, which places it here against the most ridiculous off-roaders and the best luxury SUVs I've tested. It. The 6x6 isn't really comparable to any of these vehicles, but it holds its own, I suppose, and it has the highest weekend score of anything except the Jeep Trackhawk. Not that if you were car shopping, you'd ever compare the 6x6 to a Trackhawk, or uh, to anything, really. Ah!